Hi everyone, my name is Wendy Chung and I'm from StorageCraft Asia Pacific and I am the Marketing Coordinator. Today I'm going to go through a couple of new product overviews, firstly on Shadow Protect SBX, including the upgrade process from previous editions of Shadow Protect to SBX, followed by a quick overview of Shadow Control 3.0, our new management console. Afterwards, Carl Thompson, our professional services consultant will then run through a demonstration of both SPX and Shadow Control. First up, StorageCraft Shadow Protect SPX. When disaster strikes, IT administrators need a lifeline. The new cross-platform Shadow Protect SPX is your lifeline for providing secure, reliable, trusted protection and recovery of virtual and physical Windows and Linux systems when you need it most. Like disasters, IT environments are anything but standard whether you have a physical, virtual or hybrid environment running Windows, Linux or a mix of both operating systems. With SPX, you can now tie your entire IT environment together with a single cross-platform solution and have a single management view of it all with the new StorageCraft Shadow Control Management Console. IT administrators can standardize their IT environments with a single cross-platform solution that protects both physical and virtual Windows and Linux systems the latter of which is now more commonly seen in larger environments. Shadow Protect SBX protects Linux servers and virtual machines, Windows servers and virtual machines, as well as Windows desktops and laptops. It allows you to rapidly and reliably backup, recover and migrate your whole IT environment with one solution, giving you the single view of backup recovery operations whether you are using SBX console or StorageCraft Shadow Control. SPX has many of the same reliable features as Shadow Protect, including the same backup file format. You can also recover to different hardware or hypervisor environments of StorageCraft hardware independent resource technology for Windows systems and boot repair for Linux systems. You can also convert backup images to BHD or VMDK files for migration or restoration to a virtual machine or boot backup images as a virtual machine for a quick recovery with StorageCraft Virtual Boot technology. So what's new? SPX has a lot of new features including its cross-platform support. I'll walk through these features with you to give you a quick overview and Carl will cover it off in more depth during the demonstration. So the first new feature, cross-platform, supports both Windows and Linux. The supported Windows operating systems are the same for SPX as they are for Shadow Protect, with the exception of Windows 2000. On the Linux side, we currently support Ubuntu 12.04, Red Hat Enterprise Linux 6, and CentOS 6. SPX also has a newly designed user interface that's easy to use, intuitive, with faster and fewer clicks and wizards. You can now use the same interface to connect to Windows and Linux machines running SPX, and you can view the status of backup jobs quickly from the main console. You can click on any backup jobs to view a detailed job summary and there is also a help overlay feature which Carl will show you during the demonstration. The first time you use SPX, the help overlay feature will pop up on your screen and after that you can access it from the help menu. SPX also includes a revolutionary new patented job line. This is a feature that's unique to StorageCraft and no other competitor on the market has something similar. Directly from that job timeline you can now mount a volume, restore a volume, verify your backup images and use StorageCraft Virtual Boot to boot up any backup image as a VM. All those things that can be accomplished directly from the Image Chain browser, which Carl will show you later on. In addition to the integrated Virtual Boot functionality, SPX has also extended Virtual Boot support. You can boot a Windows or Linux backup on a supported Linux version and you can of course boot a Windows backup on a supported Windows system. There is also a new job scheduler that is more granular and flexible, giving you lots of scheduling options to best suit your business's needs. In this slide, we have an example of the mixed mode schedule. Carl will go into more detail on this later during the demonstration. There is also extended virtual environment support. SPX supports guests running on a broad range of hypervisor platforms, including the most common platform, as well as numerous others listed here as well. SPX is fully supported across the entire StorageCraft solution including Shadow Control version 3.0, Image Manager and our cloud services. So one of the main questions we get asked is, what solution should I buy now that Windows is supported by both Shadow Protect 5 and SBX? 
at Storagecraft, we recommend that you move towards SBS because it's the new generation in backup and disaster recovery technology. It's the same pricing as Shadow Protect 5, but now comes with more features that we covered before. On the licensing side of things, for SBX, there is both MSP and Perpetual licenses available. The same licenses, packs and bundles as Shadow Protect currently have are also available for the Windows side of SBX, including desktop, small business, virtual and server. On that note, we would like to mention that we currently have a virtual promotion across Asia Pacific. That is, we're offering 30% off all new Perpetual Virtual licenses, packs and bundles until the end of August. If you're not ready to buy it and you wish to check out the new SBX, there's an option to download a 15-day trial license on our website, www.storagecraft.com forward slash au. To quickly cover off these trial instructions, it's basically the same process overall for both Windows and Linux, with a couple of exceptions at the beginning. So on the Windows side, for step one, you need to download the SBX installer file from the website. Once you have the SBX software installed, you can follow these instructions listed here. For Linux, there is instructions to follow for the SPX installation process and then the same process here to activate the trial license. Upgrading from Shadow Protect to SPX. If you're already a Shadow Protect user, we do have a designated upgrade path from Shadow Protect to SPX. You can upgrade at any time when it makes sense for you or your business or when time allows. The process is designed to be seamless and automated as possible with minimum interaction required. It does typically require a single reboot and it focuses on migrating the key backup and licensing settings. One question you may have is, is it free to upgrade? The answer is yes. Users with a valid product key and active maintenance are entitled to upgrade from the latest two versions of Shadow Protect to SBX at no charge. However, the upgrade process will directly migrate job settings from an existing Shadow Protect 5 install to SVX. If you have Shadow Protect 5 install and an active product key with maintenance, SVX will install and post migration your license will be active. If you have a non-valid expired trial product key or a retail or perpetual key without active maintenance, SVX will still install but it won't activate and existing backups will not run until you activate SBX. Once you activate SBX, all existing backups will run as normal. So that leads to the question, what if you have Shadow Protect 4 installed? If you want to preserve the job settings that you have in Shadow Protect 4, you'll first need to upgrade to Shadow Protect 5 and then migrate from Shadow Protect 5 to SBX. But if you don't wish to preserve your job settings, you can uninstall Shadow Protect 5 and do a fresh install of SBX and configure your new job settings as you wish. So what is migrated during an upgrade from Shadow Protect 5 to SPX? As I mentioned before, it focuses on migrating the key backup jobs, configuration and license settings. The process is designed to migrate critical backup configuration settings, basic email notification settings, any MSP license, migrate and replace any valid Shadow Protect 5 retail or perpetual product key. It also ensures that existing backup jobs continue to run post-migration as normal. And as I mentioned before, there's only typically one single reboot required to minimize your business downtime. In this slide, it details the upgrade process that's detailed in our FAQ section. However, in the interest of time, I won't go through all of these, but I did want to point out three steps that are highlighted in blue and bolded, as those steps are those that you require to take action. The rest of the process is automated, and Carl will go through this with you in his demonstration. So that's it for SBX. I'll now move on to Shadow Control. Shadow Control is a free yet robust monitoring and management appliance. The new Shadow Control allows you to tie your IT environment all together and give you full visibility to the health and status of your backup jobs across your whole IT environment. This is especially helpful where you may have hundreds or even thousands of Windows or Linux systems across multiple clients or sites. Through a single web-based console, you can efficiently monitor and manage backup and disaster recovery operations for a large number of virtual and physical Windows and Linux systems in local or remote environments. In version 3, there is a couple of new features that I want to point out. Of course, we have extended Shadow Control to support Linux. It supports the same as Windows operating systems and Linux distributions that are supported by Shadow Protect and SBX. But it's also extending monitoring to support endpoints running SBX. With the new release of Shadow Control, you can monitor and manage every Shadow Protect, SBX and StorageCraft image manager endpoints in your environment, all through a single 
web-based console. Additionally, for endpoints protected by SBX, Shadow Control offers policy-based backup job management that lets you quickly and easily create and assign consistent backup job configurations to groups of endpoints. A little bit more detail on that one. You can actually create a single backup job policy that can be then assigned to multiple SBX endpoints at once. That can then be applied to a single machine or a group of machines. You can choose to assign a default policy to shadow control organizations and sites so that subscribed endpoints automatically receive a backup job configuration when they are subscribed to the shadow control appliance. That concludes the product overview section. I'll now pass it over to Carl who will take us through a demonstration of SBX and shadow control. All right, so thanks Wendy. Again, my name is Carl Thompson from Storagecraft Asia Pacific and I'm glad to be presenting this demonstration. So uh, firstly, there's been quite a good buzz around these new releases of SPX and Shadow Control. The particular you know, excitement and we're getting some good reviews is around this Shadow Control policy based job scheduling. So with SPX, the interface will be familiar if you've used SPX for Linux, which has been out for a couple of months now. The interface is now the same for Windows. So we've now launched the fully cross-platform solution. So the next thing is let's go and take a look at the installer files for SPX. Now this is a, a big update is the MSI installers and we also have a silent install option with this. So particularly for bigger sites, you can can use Active Directory Group Policy to deploy. We've got some good instructions here in terms of creating a transform file for Group Policy or using silent install scripts to deploy that, um, perhaps even using existing RMM tools. Now, what I'm going to do is start by looking at SPX and going through a, a migration process. We'll take a look at the interface and then we'll jump across to the new shadow control. We'll take a look at the policy-based um, backup job scheduling and we'll also take a look at the organization and group settings as well as the monitoring and management enhancements. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to jump into a virtual machine here. I have got Shadow Protect version 5 installed. I've got an existing backup job that's running. Um, in fact, even if I go in here right now and execute another incremental, this is a continuous incremental backup job. It's got an existing backup chain. I'm going to migrate this Shadow Protect to SPX and then we will continue that same backup job from there. So nice and easy. Anyone with a valid Shadow Protect 4 or 5 active maintenance, as Wendy's has discussed, will be entitled to this update for free. So just going to close out of the console there. On the desktop, I have the Shadow Protect SPX. I've actually got the 64-bit installer here. So that's another feature I didn't mention earlier. We now have 32 and 64-bit versions of the agent. So I'm going to go in here and run the installer. I'm going to go through and basically accept the agreement, click next. Here's the new install path, again the 64-bit location, go next and install. So what this is going to do is it's going to stop, in fact it'll actually show us a bit of information on the screen, but it's going to go ahead and stop the Shadow Protect service. It's going to upgrade the low-level kernel driver and copy the new SPX installation files across it's then going to require a reboot. And basically, at this point, we can see the new icons already on the desktop there. I'm going to click Finish. Yes to reboot. So at this point, until you reboot, there's no more backups can be done. If you had deployed via group policy, the installation happens during the startup process, and that does starts installing at this point in time. It then forces itself a reboot during that process. Once the system comes up in the background, what it will do is copy the job across into SPX. It will then go ahead and remove Shadow Protect version 5 from the system. So if I just go into Windows Explorer here, into C drive, program files, storage craft. There is the old Shadow Protect install. And in fact, we can see here, it's actually gone ahead and removed that. So I've actually got the Shadow Control agent already installed on here, so that directory is gonna remain. But nevertheless, if I go into Shadow Protect SPX, the first thing that'll happen is it wants to connect to the agent. So 
I'm at the login screen here. I can from here connect to this, obviously this local agent, but also to remote sessions. So I could be on my backup server and I could connect to a remote Windows or Linux agent from here. So we don't have to be directly on the machine. So what we need to do is we need to log in with our credentials. So um, I'm gonna log into my domain admin account here and click connect to this local session. What we can see here is there is that server backup one. So this is the existing job and this is obviously the new interface. So if you haven't used the Linux interface before, this is what SPX now looks like. Now there's a whole heap of um, new functions here. We can do a lot of stuff straight from the console. So this is the same job I had set up before. It is queued to run at its next incremental job. I can click on this little um, start backup now or even right click and go start backup now. And I'm just gonna do an incremental backup. So I'm not gonna do a new base, I'm gonna continue on with that same backup chain. The backup files are gonna be the same SPI Shadow Protect incremental images you're used to, and my image manager will continue to manage that. Now we can see here, it's going through and doing a very quick snapshot of this machine. So it's not, it doesn't need to do a differential or anything, it just continues on from the previous backup, and this will just keep running increments from there. Perhaps if I just minimize this for a second, I might be able to bring up another machine here and show you. So if I go open console, let's log into this SPX interface here. Now this particular machine, I think has got a schedule to back up every hour. So I've had it running for a little bit of time today, but here's hourly increments. So I can see here, this was my base image and here's my hourly increments um, that, are, that have been running. So. This allows us to see if a particular backup took longer or is larger, and it really helps with troubleshooting and support when you know people are having unexpected large increments at certain times of the day or, or you know regularly, they can really troubleshoot this and track it down from this job timeline nice and easy. Now what's also really cool from this timeline is I can select any point in time and from here, from this console, I can virtual boot it, I can get image information, I can mount the image, so you know your original quick mount with Shadow Protect 5, uh, we can restore it to another local volume, to a VMDK or VHD file, or we could verify the image. So we can do all of this straight from the timeline, which is really cool. Now what I might do is just cut back to the other machine I had running, just so we can stick with the same VM for the purpose of, of this demonstration today. So let's go back to full screen. Now, uh, let's take a look at some of these functions. So if I click on this button up here, this is to create a new job. So with the new job, with Shadow Protect 5, there used to be a wizard where you'd go next, next, next through the different options. This now simulates this really down to two tabs, and obviously there's an advanced tab here. Most people are just accepting the defaults on this particular screen. However, for settings, we give it a name. So let's say backup one, for example, a destination. So this is obviously just your um, SMB share path or another local volume comment, you know, put in your name or something, that this information sticks with the image file. So it is good to have a, a relevant comment here. Maybe I'll put all volumes, server one, for example. Compression standard is, uh, you know, typically 40%, best is upwards of 50%. Encryption, we can go right up to AES 256 bit. Now down in the volumes, um, obviously I've only got one volume here, a C drive. But what's really cool here is that you can select all volumes and it will select automatically everything for us. Or I could select just the operating system volumes. Obviously I only have an operating system volume here, but also I could select perhaps just data volumes and it would select all my other volumes. So really easy to just very quickly select what we want to back up. On the schedule side of things, we've got our typical continuous incremental job, so one full backup and incrementals forever. What's really cool is I can specify to begin the initial base image after hours. So previously with Shadow Protect 5, um, you didn't get this option to schedule when to do the full. Um, so we can schedule that. And then down the bottom is the incremental schedule. So Monday to Friday, I could back up all day, every 15 minutes. Perhaps I'll add another weekly schedule to include Sunday and Saturday, perhaps just from 8 a.m. till 6 p.m., maybe every two hours, for example. So back up less often on the weekend, no one's working, maybe I'm not so worried. You might be a company that has a scenario where people work on weekends if it's the last day of the month. So we could also add in a monthly schedule and say on the last day of the month, 
back up every 15 minutes. Perhaps you do stock take, you know, there's a risk you could lose a large amount of work for, or, or some accounting reason. So really flexible here. You can have up to three different options. These are all just incrementals within the same backup chain. So really easy. Now, if I just remove a couple of these, let's take a look what else is new here. We've got, uh, you know, our regular full backups, uh, a manual one-off full, but the, the new feature here is this mixed incremental schedule. So it's just a mixed schedule. So what this allows you to do is define or basically simulate your weekly or fulls or mix them into this one schedule. So I guess this is, you know, you do a regular monthly full and then SPX can manage the retention itself. Now I do need to mention with the continuous incremental job, you must use StorageCraft Image Manager service. Today this is only Windows, uh, Image Manager is only a Windows service, so your Linux SPX agents will need to back up to a repository where it can be managed by Image Manager. On the mix schedule, obviously you don't use Image Manager, SPX will be able to manage those um, sets of backups. So again, we can specify when to do the initial full backup. On the left hand side is the schedule of fulls. So I could do a weekly full at 6pm on fr every Friday. I could also say in case the last day of the month was on a Monday, perhaps I want a full on that particular day as well. So I've got every Friday and the last day of the month, we always get a full starting at 6pm. On the right hand side, again, I can add up to three options here when we do incrementals. So if I say every 15 minutes, Monday to Friday, again, as per last time, um, add in another weekly schedule for the weekends to maybe go every hour, for example, can back up every hour. Now, these incrementals all just go off the setters of the last full. So whether it was the last day of the month or the Friday, the increments just go back to the last full image and that becomes a set. Under advanced, is the retention settings that SPX will manage for these mixed or, or regular full backups, where it says how many sets do you want to keep. If you'd done continuous incrementals, you wouldn't get this retention option available. Now, I'm just going to cancel out of here because I've already got a job. Um, if we just take a look here, destinations, this is the destination. It's brought that across from Shadow Protect. Of course, I could add in um, another local volume or network share path to, to back up to. The image chain browser I really like. So if I click on the image chain browser, select that destination, it shows here all my base images that would be available. Now I've only got the one here, so if I click on this, I can see my full image and all of my increments. So it's really easy because I can see here, it excludes all the MD5 and bitmap files. It just shows me what's available. It gives me all the dates and the sizes of the increments from here. So really easy. If I look at this one here, I can see here 116 meg, that particular increment, that was obviously the SPX install itself, and that was the following increment. So image chain browser is really great. Again, what I can do from here is virtual boot, mount, restore volume, or verify an image, all straight from here. So really cool, really easy. Now, if I just close out of here, um, we've been doing some backup. So let's just minimize this folder, and let me just create a file here called, let's call it SPX YouTube. So what I'm going to do is go into SPX, ask it to do an incremental right now, start an incremental backup, and click OK. So I'm just doing another increment, no big deal here. Um, what I'm going to use this for is to show you Virtual Boot. Now this is a VM, so I can't run Virtual Boot from here. What we are going to do is simulate the server crashing. So I'm going to go in here and shut down this virtual machine. So what I'm going to do is I'm now on the backup server. Now what we're going to do here is go into SPX on the backup server. And I'm not backing this particular machine up, but this is where my images are. This is my BDR, my backup and disaster recovery server. So I'm going to go into the image chain browser. I'm going to select my backup destination that contains that virtual machine backups. There's my C drive and there's the incremental we just did. So I'm going to go down to the bottom here and click Virtual Boot. Select that incremental as the boot volume. Put in a name here, so I'll call this SPX YouTube. Give it some memory. I'm not going to attach the networking for this demonstration and automatically start the virtual machine. So I'm going to click Create. 
And what this is doing is we can see it's launched the background tasks wizard and it's basically performing a hardware independent restore. It's saying, look, I don't care if that backup was a physical server. In this case, it was a VMware virtual machine. It could have been Hyper-V or any of our supported environments. It is now booting up that backup using the Oracle VirtualBox hypervisor built in with our virtual boot technology to get this machine up very quickly and give us disaster recovery. Also a really great tool for testing, sample testing of your environment and that kind of thing. But basically we can get the server up directly from that compressed image. We don't have to wait for a full restore. It doesn't matter if your server storage is one or two terabytes of data, for example, it's virtualizing straight off that compressed image. And here we can see this machine has now come up online. So I won't delve into virtual boot too much today. That is a technology we've had, um, StorageCraft have had for a long time. So I'm just going to power that off in my local SPX here. All right, so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go and power on that uh, test machine that we were looking at earlier. And what we'll do while that's starting up is go and take a look at Shadow Control. So Shadow Control has been around for about two and a half years. Um, it's great for resellers or larger sites to monitor their endpoints. We're talking tens, hundreds or thousands of endpoints can be monitored and managed from Shadow Control. Now this is a free download from the StorageCraft website. If I just clip over to the software updates page, down the bottom here we'll see here the Shadow Control Appliance version 3.01 is now the latest version and there's also um, an endpoint which gets installed onto each of the endpoints, it's a little agent. So this is the appliance, this is the dashboard, it gives us information on Shadow Protect, Image Manager and Shadow Control status. If I click on endpoints, here is a bunch of endpoints that we have available and these are endpoints in my organization or it could be for multiple customers or sites. So the first thing I guess is if we look under the spanner on the top right under organizations what we can do is create organizations and this could be for different customers or you could just have one organization but create multiple sites. So I've got various examples here what I'll do today is let's create another one and I'll call this SPX YouTube. This is just what I'm using today. And then what we can do here, you'll notice, is Shadow Protect SPX backup policy. I can assign this organization a backup policy as well as contact information to receive reporting on alerts, reports, etc. from here. So I'm going to come back and we'll assign a policy in a moment. I'm going to go save. And if we just scroll down, um, there it is, the SPX YouTube. I could also create a site within that as well if I wanted to. Now, the first thing is, if we just jump back to that virtual machine, I'm going to go in here and open the console. Right, so what we can do from here is go into the Shadow Control Endpoint Configuration Utility. Now, Shadow Control can be, the agent can be rolled out as well via MSI um, using Group Policy. You can also script out the agent settings so this automatically applies itself to the appliance. So I'm going to go in here and put in my IP address, 6873.21. Uh, it's a virtual machine. I'm going to specify admin credentials. So I'm just putting in my credentials to the appliance. And organization, I put SPX YouTube. So I click subscribe, successfully subscribed. Cool, and that's it. So this endpoint is now subscribed. What I'm also going to do before we go any further is I'm just going to go back into the Shadow Protect SPX agent and I'm wanting to delete this job. Now, the reason why I'm deleting this is to show you how the new policy is going to be applied. So let's say we've rolled this out to a blank new site and they don't have any existing backup jobs. Let's go and take a look at how we can roll this out via a policy. So if I just minimize this and go back to Shadow Control, if we look under SPX YouTube, perhaps if I just refresh this page, we can now actually see there is one endpoint subscribed. If I click on Assign Endpoints over here, I can see if I go to the SPX YouTube, there's my RDO1 virtual machine we were looking at. So the next step is to go into Manage Backup Stores. 
Now, what this is, is this is where you add in a location. So let's say I call a backup store YouTube, and the path might be NAS slash backup share, and then you need to authenticate. So domain, NAS, username, Carl, password, password. So I click save, and now I've created a backup store. Now I'm going to use this one today I already had set up because that's where my, my current shared folder is for backups. This backup store, you would create one for each customer or for each site. So this is the local destination on premise where the SPX backups are going to go. The next step is to go in and create a Shadow Protect SPX backup policy. So if I go in here, I've got a bunch here already, a critical every 15 minutes, 24-7. I've called one high, it's every 30 minutes, 9 to 5 weekdays, and I've called another one normal, 1 hours, 9 to 5 weekdays. So let's go ahead and add a new policy. I'll call this SPX YouTube Backup Protection Scheme, all volumes, operating system volumes, or data volumes. So we've got a pretty basic option here, which is going to select um, you know, default scheme. Backup store, we're going to select obviously the one I had pre-set up with the appropriate credentials. Compression, standard, um, is going to be 40%, which is fine. Encryption, if we choose encryption, we have to enter a password as well. I'm going to leave that on none for the moment. If I go to schedule at the top here, we'll add in a Monday to Friday, all day, every 15 minute increment. That's fine. Um, perhaps I'll add in a second schedule and let's just get some backups happening on the weekend as well. Perhaps just um, every hour would be fine there. So what we can also do here is set a start time random delay. Now if I was going to be rolling this out to say 50 machines, I don't want them all starting a backup at 5 a.m. on the dot. So this particular job, an hourly, it's going to repeat every hour. So if I set this random delay up to an hour, it means any time between 5 a.m. and 6 a.m., that initial incremental will happen for that schedule, and I'll do the same for the weekly. This is a 15 minute window, so I'll set a random delay of up to 15 minutes. So that means if I apply this to 50 machines, they'll randomly start anywhere within that 15 minute increment and then go from there. So they're not all gonna be doing the backup at exactly the same second, which is great. Now, under advanced, we've got some extra options here. I'm gonna leave them as default and click save. So we've now created an SPX YouTube backup policy it's got a backup store applied to it what will actually happen if I just go back to the backup store under this folder it is going to create a subfolder for each machine that uses this backup store so I don't need to create these individual subfolders that is handled automatically as part of the policy now if I go back to organizations and find SPX YouTube and click on edit organization what I can do is apply default policy, SPX YouTube backup, start the first full backup of this job, well let's start it immediately, that's okay, um, but we can set a random time. So again, if I was going to group policy out SPX to say 50 servers and have this group automatically configured, I don't want them all starting a backup at you know immediately, especially if it's throughout the day. But more importantly, overnight, I don't want 50 machines all trying to send backups to a, a backup NAS or, or some uh, backup server storage all at the same time. It will slow things down. So we can set a random time, and you know you might set a random time anywhere over the next 12 hours, so that you know that full backup overnight could start at any point in time across those servers. So in this case, I'll start it immediately. We're going to click save. So we'll notice here it has one um, endpoint agent that was the RDO1. If we go down and take a look at this agent, you'll notice here, here's the SPX YouTube backup policy. So in here, you can see it's now doing the initial full backup for that policy, which I said to start immediately. But I can't do anything. I can't stop this backup job. I can't edit or delete it. It's saying this job was created by a shadow control backup policy. Policy jobs cannot be stopped from the SPX interface. So this is managed by the appliance, which is really great. We're now getting a true enterprise feature here where people on site or people on machines can't muck around or change these policies. So if this machine was ever to unsubscribe from the appliance, it would become a local policy so that obviously we can continue to back it up, but only at that point could you then 
modify this job outside of the appliance. So it's going to go ahead and do this full backup. It's then going to back up every 15 minutes during weekdays and then hourly throughout the weekends as per my schedule. So that's really cool. It's nice and easy. It's immediate. If I just minimize this and go back to the appliance and we go into this customer or site, click on the endpoint, we can see here that has applied the backup policy to this machine. Now, in terms of um, if we go back to this endpoint here, we can also see RDO1 SPX YouTube. We've got a good system here running and it's all under control. So that's the basics with Shadow Control. Um, we do have also um, under VM deployment, the StorageCraft plugin, which integrates into vSphere and Virtual Machine Manager, which gives you awareness of your entire environment. So if I click on the Manage Clients here, we can see a bunch of my virtual machines. Additionally, if I open up a new tab, we can log into uh, my vSphere. And from here, we can also see the new StorageCraft plugin. Now this came out in um, December, January holidays from StorageCraft. It's a plugin for vCenter or for Virtual Machine Manager for Hyper-V environments. And this gives us visibility from the host level of the environment and then enables us to monitor and manage our virtual environment and, you know, in terms of managing and being aware of what is and isn't being protected by Shadow Protect. Now, as you see on the home screen, we have the StorageCraft plugin here. If I click on the plugin, it brings us down to a summary and it gives us a nice graph. So it's showing here on this particular environment, I don't have Shadow Controller installed or subscribed on 65%. 2%, so it's got the endpoint agent, but the Shadow Protect isn't installed. We've got 1%, Shadow Protect is installed, but a successful backup job hasn't yet completed. So that's perhaps that one that I've just started. And then we've got three machines that are fully protected. So getting a nice graph here, which is giving us host space visibility. And obviously here we can choose between different vCenters. So that's the plugin. Now, back under Shadow Control, we can also create user accounts and roles. So I can basically create user accounts that have access to specific organizations or sites, but not other ones, and then also control how much access they have within that. So this does tear down really nicely for our resellers if they're wanting to give end users access to Shadow Control to perhaps monitor or manage their particular backups. Even in hosted environments where you may have one server or, or a vCenter with lots of customers, virtual machines hosted, you can define them by groups and sites so that only customers have access to their virtual machine backups from within here. So really great tool to manage that. All right, well, that brings me to the end of my YouTube today. So hopefully this has been informative to you. Thanks again for Wendy for running through those PowerPoints and explaining everything in detail. Hopefully I've covered off everything that uh, she mentioned I was meant to talk about. But again, my name is Carl Thompson, StorageCraft Asia Pacific. If you have any other queries, please don't hesitate to get in touch with our sales or support team for more information. Thank you.